remember back in 2019, Ruth Ann, when I hooked up with you at a truck stop out in the west in that dusty old town. That's right. I came in that truck stop with my spurs and my Peterbilt buckle. Build it a belt buckle. I can't even talk tonight. Ching, ching. Do you remember that, Ruth Ann? I do. You remember me picking you up? <laughs> you remember me hooking up with you? I'm such a hussy. <laughs> no, you weren't a hussy. I'm just good. That's right. I landed you 2019. Never mind. How about this music instead, Ruth Ann? Happy New Year, baby. Happy New Year. I thought maybe we'd just have a little bit of fun here on Talk CDL, Ruth Ann. You know, 2019 in the books. Thank God. Yeah, I agree with that. Goodbye, 2019. Bye-bye, Felicia. Come on, 2020. Welcome to Talk CDL. Ruth Ann, we thought we'd start out today doing what? Hey drivers, are you thinking about becoming a lease operator? Well, NCI is leasing out one to two year old Kenworth T680 double bunk condo tractors, fully loaded with APU and fridge. Plus, the company is owned by their own product. That's right, they deliver mainly their own freight, which means your business will be thriving for a long time to come. 844-311-7076. That's 844-311-7076. 7076 and tell them Talk CDL sent you. Please, thank you. You know what sucks? Shopping for truckers insurance. You know what sucks more? Not having it. You want to know how to fix that? Call 800 347 5373 and let the trucking insurance experts at Rev help you get the coverage you need without breaking the bank. Rev specializes in providing insurance of all types to small fleet owners and independent owner operators. Whether local, short haul, or long haul, Rev Insurance can get you covered at a price that fits your budget. From liability damages and cargo to workers' compensation and surety bonds, Rev has your back while you're out there on the road. Call 800 800- 347-5373 or visit www.revinsurance.com. That's R-E-V-I-N-S-U-R-A-N-C-E.com. That's 800-347-5373. Rev Insurance knows truckers because they only work with truckers. A little bit of trucker talk. Okay. Lay it on me. Oh, uh, you're supposed to lay it on me? Don't you have some stats for us? <laughs> okay. Yeah. Whew. A little bit of holiday head still in there. Uh, yeah, I got to get rid of that. that <laughs> I was, got, I got some still, facts here. It's still January 1st. And, hmm. So. What do you got for us today? The Got a little, got a little article you want to read? The trucking industry, the U.S., trucking industry the u.s trucking industry accounts for about 700 billion dollars okay annually Mm -hmm. okay so it's just basically saying that it's well it it doesn't really actually say annually it's just saying that it's worth that so i don't know if you want to consider that annually or not it sounds like an annual thing but you know what makes me want to throw up (laughs) <laughs> Forbes just came Sour out. Crowd. <laughs> Forbes just came out with their richest guy in the world thing, and that dude that owns Amazon, he lost thirty eight billion dollars in a divorce last year, but still retained number one spot and has a hundred and ten million or a hundred and ten billion dollars. Yeah, and the trucking industry is only worth seven hundred. Bi- the dude's almost as rich as the trucking industry. That's pretty sick. Hmm. I, I didn't think of that till just pr- now. Yeah, that's pretty. All right. That's a stout bank account. Downer Troy here. Let's just move on. To the, we don't want to talk about that anymore. I wonder if Mr. Amazon needs like a nephew or something. Maybe a, a podcast even. He wants to buy one. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. For one million dollars. For one million dollars. <laughs> no, okay, come on, let's go. What do you got? So it's $700 billion. This, uh-huh. These are some trucker stats. This is what we wanted to do. We wanted to give these guys and gals out there in trucker land a, a pile of stats on the first day of 2020 to kind of kick off our year. We wanted to just kind of have uh, uh, some fun facts about trucking, and then we'll just go from there. We got all kind of interviews coming up, but it's just you and I tonight. 
It is. All right. So what else you got? The uh, U.S. trucking industry accounts for more than 5% of all the full-time jobs in America, even though the truckers themselves earn a lower weight, lower than average wage. Okay. Say that again. I want to hear that stat one more time. The U.S. trucking industry accounts for more than 5% of all the full-time jobs in America, even though the truckers themselves earn a lower than average wage. Basically, the average annual wage... Uh, let me go down here to where it is. For a trucker, let me guess. Can I guess? Go ahead. You had the f going. Is it? It's probably in the 40s. 40,000. 42,000. Mm, no. No. No, you're a little not. You're not off by much. Like if it was the Price is Right, would I be over or under? Under. Really? How much did I so underbid by? It's just basically saying, according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, in 2018, the median income was forty six thousand eight hundred per year, but the annual wage for a truck driver was forty three thousand six hundred and eighty. That's a. I'm going to tell you something that actually rips me up. I mean, you talk about. Talk about a job, not only, and don't get me wrong, like people go, well, you chose a profession to be gone. I get that. Yeah, you're right. But the hours that a trucker actually works. He's, here, let me tell you something, 43,000. Now think about this. When you're done at your job, most people, when you're done at your regular whatever job you do, right, you punch out and you go home. You're not responsible for that it's job. The, it's the it's the eight hour a day, sometimes ten hour a day. That's you well, know. It, well, it's not that though. Reason what I'm getting at is, if you're a truck driver, right, and you you punch out for for the day, right, and or you, if you're a truck driver and you leave, you're done. Your you're done with your clock for the day. You're still responsible. I can't even freaking talk. Listen, when you're done. For the day, you're not done for the day is what I'm getting at. You don't get to go home and say, okay, the job is yours. You're responsible for this tractor trailer that I'm sleeping in tonight. You're still technically on the job mm-hmm. 24-7. Yeah. A lot of people don't realize that. No, I'm not saying that the trucking truck drivers need to have pity. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying, though, but for $43,000 freaking thousand dollars a year, uh, 3000 you just said that the average it's wage. about $3,000 difference. The average American worker makes $46,000, and the average the average truck trucker and I know there's a bunch of truckers out there that make 60 70 grand but there's still a lot of guys out there that are not making jack crap it's it's, it's something well here's the thing the the statistics are actually pulled down then also for those drivers that don't want to run but you know you have the drivers that instead of doing close to 3000 miles they're doing 1500 cuz they're going home a lot so those drivers those those large chunk actually of drivers are thrown into those statistics with the drivers that are actually out there busting their butt doing 60 80000 a year mm-hmm. So when you look at what those statistics are, yeah. you know, it is uh, every driver statistic. So they don't they don't group them to, OK, these are the drivers that that don't work as hard. But what yeah. I don't like is the same thing you were just mentioning, that the driver is not they don't get clocked out and saying, OK, well, this this load full of freight that I have now, even though that there's a, a lock on it, I'm not responsible for it. Yeah, Go you're ahead still technically responsible. Grab your little your little um Lockbuster. <laughs> no, you can't just you can't just go. Okay, I'm going home for the day. You're a thousand miles away. And like I said in the beginning, I get that we chose the profession to be out there trucking. I get that part. But what's funny is the the wage the wage part is kind of a ripoff to a truck driver. I'm telling you, man. My grandfather in the '70s, people in the '70s were making more than these guys make today. It's kind of funny the way you're drinking out of that straw, Rutan. It look you kind of look crippled the way you're just sticking your lips out to grab the straw. It's just kind of funny. But anyway, I was trying to pull a Bugs Bunny thing. No, <laughs> but no, seriously, that's you know I don't want to beat this really t- to the max this wage thing, but there's it, I can't even dig into the depth of it to make people understand it because a lot of them, like I, I said, we, we I think we can understand it though, well, Troy. But I think. Uh, I think a lot of them think, well, you're a trucker and, and you get to sit on your ass and you get to drive for a living and blah, blah, blah. But that's, that's not, that is not a, hey, if you've ever gone on a trip, 
I'll give I'll give everybody an idea. If you ever gone on a trip, a ten hour trip, and by like the third hour you're going, are we still are we there yet? Are we there yet? Truckers do that every day. And again, we chose the profession. I get that. Well, part. yeah, because you, you a lot of drivers, the reason they choose that profession is because they like to go bye bye. Well, I, they I, want to do that. Right. And I get that part. That's not what I'm complaining about. I'm not complaining about the the hardness of the job. But what my problem is is the hours that a truck driver actually sticks in is really technically even hey let me tell you something if let's just say for example i'm on my in my sleeper right and i'm sleeping i'm four hours into my break right and somebody backs into my truck whose ass do you think has to get up and be responsible for that truck and i'm not on the clock i'm on my damn break and somebody just how many truckers uh, this weekend had somebody back into them while they were in the, in the truck stop mm-hmm. i'm just saying something happens to the truck all of a sudden you're, you're sitting there and, and your truck overheats who has to get up and take care of the company truck off the clock mm-hmm. that's really responsible he's not getting paid for it he's and he's making three thousand dollars a damn year less that's all i'm saying is that's a bullshit wage and excuse my language but it's a bunch of crap what else yeah. you got ruthann i'm in a mood today baby mm-hmm. and i got energy after that coffee mm-hmm. come on okay so data shows that the trucking the trucking itself moves 71% of all the freight in America and mm-hmm. nearly 6% of all the full-time jobs in the country are in the trucking industry. Now, we already know that they said that the U.S. trucking industry accounts for more than 5% of all the full-time jobs. So I just wanted to make sure, because this is c- calculating the, when they say nearly 6%, that's everything that's involved in trucking. Right. So the industry employs millions of drivers to generate hundreds of billions of dollars in annual revenue. Seven hundred billion dollars. <laughs> it serves as a vital lifeline between producers and consumers when it comes to everything from gasoline to gallons of milk. While the trucking industry is now decades old, it remains dynamic and with constant demand with the consumers keeping trucking as vital to the economy as ever. So here are some facts. In 2017, the American trucking industry posted revenue higher than the GDP Mm -hmm. of more than 150 nations. Isn't that crazy? Yeah. So in 2017, the U.S. trucking industry generated just over $700 billion. That was more than the GDP of Bangladesh and slightly less than the GDP of Colombia. I wonder how many guys kiss the Amazon CEO's ass. $110 billion. Will you just get off of that guy? Just, Literally. It's just funny. It's just when I, the more I think about the Amazon guy compared to the trucking industry. And here we are making 43000 a year. And then what do we do with our 43000 We order stuff on Amazon and make them into... <laughs> It's true. <laughs> Those statistics I just he gave you were from back. the CIA, by the way. It's too funny. He get the, What's his name? Beso or something? I don't he actually, know. He gets it all back. We, we haul his stuff for him, right? A lot of people haul Amazon stuff. And then we go spend it on him and Walmart, and we give it all back. Well, here's the thing, though. Walmart and Amazon both are starting to hire their own drivers. They have their, they're starting to get their own fleet. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, okay. So, with where the industry... We're the industry, a nation. See, now you got me off the whole thing. We're reading really well. It yeah. would be ranked third. If, if, if we're the industry, meaning if the industry was a nation, if the trucking industry was a nation, it would have ranked 33rd in the GDP. That's tra- That's <laughs> sick. Well, it is what it is. I mean, hey, trucking is huge. People don't. Re- that's what's so funny. I want to give you a comparison from trucking to Burger King. When I was 15 or 16, I got a job at Burger King because you're allowed to work 15 hours, right? And and I'll I'll, before I get move on, I'll confess I I got fired after a week, okay? But in the meantime, my studies of the Burger King industry, I was sitting there sliding around in Whopper grease, freaking French fryer. You're (laughs) you're getting pimples all over your face. Whopper grease. It's it's, grilled. I don't care. It's still greasy. And 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 the French fry grease is on the floor. You're sliding around. You're sweating your brains out, right? Hey, you're sweating your brains out, right? What are you doing? A selfie? 2020. Okay, so you're sweating your brains out, right? In Burger King at the end of the week, you might have brought home $39. 
right? Back then it was like $2.35 was minimum wage. You were allowed 15 hours, right? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, the manager was making, I think, thirty five or 45000 back then, which is crazy money for... Are you sure they were making that much? Yeah, they were, because we knew the one manager, and he told us what the the managers make. I'm serious. He wasn't BSing us. They were making... I think it was 35000 a year. That was 20 years ago. It was crazy or more. And so so there we are, right? Ruth, Ruth Ann's over here doing selfies. Nobody can see that. I just have to tell them. Well, I couldn't... The first one, you know, when you move well, too fast... Well, what I learned... Listen, what I learned about Burger King that day was everybody got screwed except the damn person sitting in the back office counting the money. Right? Mm -hmm. I'm serious. The worker was getting his butt handed to him. Well, trucking's no different. You just said it's worth $700 billion. Billion dollars. Billion. Billion. Right? I'm doing my best Your Dr. Dr. Evil, Evil right, stay, imitation. Stay, stay, you don't have to tell them. They know that. So anyways, listen. And there they are. And who's the hardest working in the trucking industry? It's the trucker. And so here we are, just like Burger King all over. We're sliding around in the damn Whopper grease and the freaking CEOs and the Amazon guy and everybody else is sitting home cashing in while the truck driver is getting chewed on little by little by little. I mean, $43,000. I'm going to get off that. What else you got? Whew. I feel like I have to get off my uh, Clydesdale here. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, approximately 5.8% of all the full-time jobs in America are related to trucking. So according to the Bureau of Labor Statistics in 2018, you there are... That. I know. Well, I'm going further into it. Oh. In 2018, there are about 129 million full-time jobs in America. That same year, approximately 7.4 million of them people were employed by the trucking industry. That means about 5.8% of all Americans... Full-time workers had jobs thanks to trucking. You know, that actually surprises me. I'll tell you why. I would have thought that that would have been more, higher than 5 5 6%. I would have thought it was more like 20 25%, that the trucking industry was related more. People are more indirectly working for trucking. But I'm wrong. Go ahead. What else you got? Walmart alone employs 8,600 truckers. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. They are trying to do away with the third-party contracts and employing its own truckers, including a hiring surge for more than 1,400 new drivers brought on in 2018 and hundreds more so far in 19. Walmart truckers earn an average of nearly 88000 per year. Yeah, I, I do know. And, and drivers, I'm going to tell you something. I don't usually give advice on what companies to work for. Okay, here on Talk CDL. But I have always said Walmart jobs are actually pretty decent jobs. They were always the guys you couldn't get on the CB, Ruthann, because they were sitting counting their money. Come on, what else you got? Stop <laughs> stop playing on your phone. I'm actually posting that too. It doesn't matter. Post Talk it CDL. later. Post it later. Okay, so now that we know that one, in 2017, trucks moved 10.8 billion tons of freight. So according to the American Trucking Association, U.S. trucks moved 10.8 billion tons of freight in 17. That equals about 30 pounds worth of goods for every man, woman, and child in the country. So every, that was for the whole year. We each averaged 2,000 or 30 pounds. And then trucks moved more than 70% of all goods transported around the United States. Trucking accounts for the vast majority of truck or freight in America with trucks carrying almost 71% of tonnage moved about the country. That far surpasses trains, boats, and air when it comes to moving cargo from the nation or around the nation. I, I have no comment on that, that statistic. More than 40% of the jobs in American trucking industry are held by minorities. You know, I actually seen something like that the other day. So 40%... Mm -hmm. Of the all trucking jobs, mm -hmm. that mean that goes from guy in the warehouse running the forklift to the to the guy in uh, you know the CEO to the drivers to everything. Forty percent of the trucking industry is minority. Right, right. But I believe if from what I read, the rest of the country is way lower than that. It's like we have we have a better mix of everybody in trucking than we do any industry. 
Well, it says trucking is surprisingly, um, e- it, it, it says equal Larry Tim. So it's just basically equal industry with 40.6% of all trucking nations, just basically like you, trucking jobs held by minorities. This fa- far outpasses the national or national, national. average. <laughs> national. Did you just say national? Yeah. Nice. National average when all the jobs are compared, overall minorities hold just 22% See, that's what I was of jobs about. in the country, according to the Bureau of Labor. And here's another statistic you probably have in there. Okay, so we have this great mix of minority in trucking. Mm-hmm. Uh, really good, 40% mm-hmm. minority. Mm-hmm. But I believe the female male gender thing is like a crazy unbalanced. But then again, I well, guess yeah, only most females don't want to be truckers. That's really what it comes down to. Well, last year when we did the interview with the women in trucking, she said that it was, I think it was 8% of the it trucking. It was low. In, it was low. I think it was 8% yeah. of the trucking was women. So. Yeah. I mean, no, and, and granted, right, we got a little bit more probably, but not a whole right, bunch of percent. But rightfully so. You know, women really prefer to be home with the children, which is cool. You know, I mean, if I if I was home, I'd rather be home with my mother than my dad, you know, back in the day. So, but anyways, what else you got? Not one of the regulators charged with overseeing the trucking industry was ever a trucker. Well, that's a surprise. So the FMCSA... So you're, you're saying that you're saying that everybody that makes up the rules, yep. you said these are regulators. Yep. So the people in charge of the trucking industry, yep. you just read mm-hmm. on Talk CDL mm-hmm. that not one of those people that are over us has ever driven a tractor trailer or held a Class A CDL. That's what I said. The Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration is charged with managing the laws and regulations that control trucking in America. But not one of the four administrators have ever held a commercial driver's license or had any background in the trucking industry. That's like a person that has a that's that never had a child in their life telling you how to raise your kid. What was that cartoon, Mr. G? What was his name, Mr.? I don't know. I don't know. He was like a bald-headed guy, Mr.... Um, she still lost me. Well, how about Mr. Burns on, on The Simpsons? <laughs> we're just talking about him. <laughs> that's what, well, that's what it reminds me of. Like, we're all working for the Burnses, Mr. Burns, and the, the uh, what's what's the, the, the goofballs that own the federal, the feds, the uh, Rothschilds and all those guys, you know, that's, that's who manages us. They make the trucking rules. I'm not kidding you. Mm-hmm. They make up the rules. I'm going to tell you something. You know what it reminds me of? I can name, I, I won't name them. But I know some trucking companies. One's in Pennsylvania. The dad. This guy made a... It was a great trucking company. They're in the center of PA. They have black trucks. I won't say their name. (laughs) But anyways. So check this out. Great company. Well, their sons went to college. Right? And and they hired a bunch of college people that never drove a tractor trailer ever. And, and the company, like, literally took a crap. Yeah. I mean, hundreds of trucks. Company was great. The dad did. I'll tell you another company. There's a company in Iowa. The guy, uh, I, I know who he is. This guy has this trucking company in Iowa, right? He started out as a trucker, built this thing up. He's mm-hmm. got friends. He's good friends, like, the, you know, in the trucking association, blah, blah, blah. And if you're out there, you know who I'm talking about. So what does he do? He turns his trucking company over to his kids and a bunch of college kids that never drove a tractor trailer. And what does he do? He comes down here to Florida every year. And what does he do? Sails around Captiva and Fort Isle or um, Fort Myers and that down where all the islands are at. Mm -hmm. And he spends like six months of the year. And he started doing that like every year and doing more and more and more. And his company kept taking more of a dump Mm -hmm. every single day. Another company, Merit. Merit, they were a company out of Nebraska, had like 200 some trucks. They all, they had W900s. That was their company trucks. What did the guy, what did the guy do? Started going out riding Harley and partying and having a good time, spending money on his old lady that he met. Not that that's a big deal, right? Brought her over here, married her, spending money on her, not paying attention to his own trucking company and, and started letting them, a bunch of college kids run the trucking company. Boom. They went out of business. I am. A, I am. A I'm surprised big, the trucking industry hasn't gone out of business. We're being run by a bunch of people that don't know trucking. Exactly. Well, here's the thing. It, it with anything that when you deal with hands-on versus textbook knowledge, the person that knows the hands-on stuff, like I would, I would sooner hire a person 
that knows what they're doing simply because they've been doing it for the last year or two and not gone to college. But I'd rather both be on my team. Yeah, but if I had a choice, I would rather the person that actually has the experience doing it than the person. Let me ask you this. Prove, then. Proven experience. Because like we said, we just talked about a couple of trucking companies. Just because they went to college doesn't mean they know crap about it. I'm not talking about college. I'm saying proven experience. If somebody's got proven experience with success, successfully running a trucking company, that's the guy I want on my team. Mm-hmm. Not... Like not some guy that just is coming out of college for business because you know business. Well, you know, here, I, that's that's I wouldn't want okay. that, and I will, and I don't like the goofballs. What do you call them? Regulators. Mm-hmm. You know they're overseeing the trucking industry and know nothing about it. But here's the thing: like the the person that we're going to interview, Ryan. Right. He he, his family has a trucking company, just like yours. Your mm-hmm. family had the trucking company. Right. So you're raised in it. So you had some basic knowledge in it. He went to college. But he's still he's now back into doing. But he was raised in trucking. He, exactly, and so that's it, where I was going to say, if you were raised in the trucking industry, then and and even though you went to college, you might have went to college to learn more of what you're going to be needing while you're in that industry, whether it be like some kind of business yeah, or accounting definitely. or something like that. That's different. That's we're not speaking about that stuff. We're talking about going into an industry, and. From a uh, from a college degree that has nothing at all to do with it, but you never even experienced that industry prior to any of your daily living. Right. Yeah. I mean, we're saying the same thing. Yeah. Well, I was just clarifying it. Well, so you, but next, you, but I'm you, getting off this horse. But you're like on a roller coaster that's got loops. And. And it's hard to follow you sometimes. I'm on the rock and roller coaster. Because I'm trying to go up the loop when you're already around. I'm going, where's she going? <laughs> That's because you need to catch up. But no, bottom line is this. The regulators, I just want to say it again, so no, everybody knows. The people that make the trucking rules. FMCSA. Th- the people that run the trucking industry have never driven tractor trailer. Ouch. What's next? Regan? I guess there's four of them. And the, I is there? Know, there's I, there's like four wish, people. Do we have their names? Well... Is it Mr. Burns? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let me, I'm, I'm clicking here. I don't think you'll have their names. Boop, 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 boop. I actually might be able to get that, but I'm not going to go there right now. Okay. All right, what's next? The next one is most grocery stores will run out of food in just three days if long-haul truckers stopped driving. Yeah, I've seen that step before. So it might seem like food supplies on supermarket shelves are boundless, always there when you need them. But in fact, experts predict that most grocery stores will start running out of food in just three days after long haul truckers stop working. And I can tell you this, if you're in an area like us... I was just going to say, you get it. hit by a hurricane. We've, we or, have experience with it. Or you're up north where you've got the snowstorm coming in. How fast does it take for all the water, bread, and. and, and, and a half a day. Those types of products, like the dry s- goods, gone off the shelf. Well, you're right. And, and, and Ruth Ann, like they predict in three days because most of that stuff has a three day shelf life. A lot of. Well, not really. No. Bread, some, yeah. bread might. But, but here's. here's w- w- I was going to say the same thing you are. As soon as everybody around has the inclination, if that's a word, if they have the in, if they have the inkling, <laughs> if they have the inkling, right, that that supplies are going to go, the greedy. Mm-hmm. We've seen old ladies pulling up to Sam's in Cadillacs with with gas cans in their car and and getting them out and filling them up to take home. Mm-hmm. So the greedy. Right away, they run and they grab the boards, they grab the water, they grab the ga- the gas, they grab all the supplies off the shelves. So believe me, it wouldn't take three days. If they knew the trucking industry was shutting down, I promise you, the greedy, they grab that stuff half a day. One day, and you're you. I couldn't. I couldn't even tell everybody how long the line. We've driven by gas lines that were miles long. Yeah, my my Crazy. favorite. My favorite. Ultimate favorites are when you go in there and you know a person does nothing but drink four cases of Coke in a week, but they're going to grab 15 cases of water when a hurricane's coming. Oh, yeah. And it's like, you don't even drink water. You drink Coke. So the people that drink water cannot get their water now because you just took them all. Well, just so everybody knows out there, and everybody knows Talks EDLs in Florida, but 
When you walk into a Walmart a di- two days before a hurricane's supposed to hit, everybody's cart is overflowing with survival stuff, and, and they, it's water, milk, everything's crazy. They limit us. They limit us. They said you can you can only get like so much cases of water because they can't get the water in fast enough to go with these people that want to get cases of it when they drink Coke all the time. So can you imagine if there was a nationwide trucker sh- mm-hmm. strike? Can you oh just imagine that? Three, three days. What's I'm saying? Yeah. Three days, my butt. I guarantee mm-hmm. you. I guarantee you. And I'm you, not saying go and stri- go on strike, guys. I mean, I'm not. I'm not telling no, you to do that. No, you would never get. The, you know how many times they've tried to organize a strike in this country? It never works. I'm just saying. Bottom line is, if the American people knew that the truckers were going to say, you know what, we're done, we're pissed off, and we're going to get, we're going to get. Um, equality here. Everybody cries about equality, but truckers never get that. Mm-hmm. So the, the day truckers stu- stood together and said, we're going to get equality here. We're not going to move the freight. In fact, they'd be blocking roads. You couldn't even get to the stores. But the bottom line is the greedy show up in mm-hmm. droves to grab all the milk and water and eggs. Trust mm-hmm. me, for all you people that didn't know that, if you ever hear of a strike or a disaster in your area, get to the store before the greedy get there because yep. the greedy are going to go and take more than their share, mm-hmm. and then they might sell it to you for like say, quadruple price. No, you go in there and you buy it all, so you can s- sell it to them for quadruple price. No, <laughs> I don't. I don't suggest doing that. But <laughs> but it's just too bad. That it's just it's it's amazing how some people are. Oh my God! I got. I, we know that there's a thousand cases of water here. We better grab nine hundred of it. Mm-hmm. And and you know it's like screw that. Okay, what do you got? Next? So many experts think that the trucking industry needs to hire. 900,000 more drivers. You know, we always, that, that driver shortage that's been going around. The experts think that. Yeah. So in 2018, the American Trucking Association released a statement saying that the industry needed to hire almost 900,000 more drivers to meet the growing demands on the industry. However, not everyone is in agreement with this. The state of the industry, a borough of labor statistics reported Report published earlier this year said the apparent shortage of drivers may actually be overblown. Listen to this, and I'm just gonna I'm gonna briefly talk about this. If you hired 900,000 more drivers, you would go way past the shortage, which would literally chop down everybody's miles even more. Now we got to share our miles with 900,000 more truckers. Yep. You'd be. That forty-three thousand dollars a year you just, just said, mm-hmm. you can cut that in half. Right. Trucking would be pretty much crap. No, you'd lose true. you'd lose nine hundred thousand of them already. As soon as you hired nine hundred thousand, nine hundred thousand would go. Screw this, I'm out of here. So mm-hmm. you'd be back to the same number. Yeah, exactly. It, it's 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 a it's a cycle. So the average professional long haul trucker logs more than one hundred million or one hundred thousand mil- miles per year, which I already knew that. Right. So given restrictions on how many hours a driver can log in a given day Mm -hmm. and in a given week, most drivers will average about 2,000 to 3,000 miles a week. Mm -hmm. Over the course of a year, that comes to an easy easy 100,000 miles. For comparison, the average U.S. motorist drives about Mm 13.5 in a year. Right. So... Where Troy was saying about how much a driver goes out there and how much they drive and how they don't get the stop in the day of the nine to five thingy. Mm. Well, this is a great comparison here. The driver's driving 100,000 miles in a year. Mm -hmm. In one month, less than two months, a driver will have at that point driven what a normal person would drive in a year. And let me just say this also, because I know there's a bunch of truckers that are listening right now going, 100,000 miles, shit, no wonder they're only making 43,000. And they're <laughs> right by saying that. Exactly. I, I yeah. used to do right around 135, 140 every year. Well, that's that's where the statistics for the drivers that don't want to really do as much well, work. And, or maybe they're just not getting the miles from their company, because let me tell you something, 100,000 miles is only 2,000 miles a week. And a truck driver needs a minimum of twenty five to 2,800 miles a week to be able to make a decent wage. I'm going to tell you that right now. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so I don't know, maybe overall, that's probably with local drivers and regional drivers and over the road drivers all averaged out probably to 100,000 miles a year. But the over the road, or did it say the over the road trucker does only 100,000? Long haul. Yeah, that's kind of a bizarre statistic. I would think that, that the average... Even if the average over the road trucker did 2,400 miles, it's, you know, he's going to be up around 100 and... Ten hundred and twenty thousand, something like that. 
I don't know. I I just know that if I only drove 100,000 miles a year, I would not want to be out there. Personally, it's not worth it. So far, the only person I know right now on a name that's part of the FMCSA who is the administrator is Ray Martinez. Who's that? The FMCSA administrator. Okay. So he's one of those, Ray's one of the guys that is regulating the trucking industry that's never driven a truck trailer before? Correct. Way to go, Ray. <laughs> Ray makes up the rules. <laughs> what else you got? That's my statistics. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Yay you know, for Ray. Yeah. Yay. Hey, um, <laughs> hey, we got to make some rules up today uh, about these truck drivers. Um, what should we do this time? Uh how about give him nine hours a drive? We'll give him and and like, like, I got an idea, because uh, like last time it was you got to run uh, so many I guess six or seven hours and take a thirty minute break and then you can drive the rest of your eleven or ten and a half hours or whatever the heck you're allowed. I hear that Ray and them guys are now saying you have to stop and have tea and biscuits or something like that. <laughs> It's a cookie break. You a gotta have you gotta have your cookies. That's the that's what those regulators Nap time. All right. <laughs> listen, we're gonna now hand out fruit and snacks and they have to have them or they can't drive. No more. Nappy nap. Yeah, you have to take your nappy nap. All right. So listen, we're just clowning around. Today is January first. We don't usually mention the date, but we're actually in in the uh, studio here on January first, two thousand twenty. Talk CDL truly appreciates everybody out there. If you're looking to be on the show, and I mean this sincerely, you know, you want to go and be on the show. Email me at ruthann at talkcdl.com. Yes, and that's true. Email Ruthann because she coordinates that. Uh, uh, show times and well, not well, show I times, don't, but don't message it on Facebook because I never get to see those messages. I mean, I Ruth can't, Ann's I never just on don't, Facebook. I don't, she, oh, yeah, you're, just be honest, you're never on the Facebook page on Talk CDL. Very little, no, I'm very little on Facebook at all, right? But I'm on there a lot, he is. I am, but message, send me the emails. I do better with email, Ruth Ann, R U T H A N N at talkcdl.com. Right. And if you want to send any videos or pics or you want anything put up there, just a lot of the guys uh, send us stuff through Messenger or you can you can email Troy at talkcdl.com and uh, I handle a lot of that stuff. Yeah, or Troy handles the pictures. Admin, whoever, somebody will get it and, and it'll get up there and, uh, you know, we'll get there. But we, we do appreciate everybody that's, that's uh, you know, sends us the great emails and the kind words and 2019... And uh, we're looking forward to 2020. Here's to a great year. All right, guys. Are we out of here, Ruthann? Peace. Peace. Praise the Lord.